Trophies are some of the most addicting aspect of gaming in today's day and age. I'm sure we all have fond memories of a plat trophy to our favorite game, or even nightmares about that one trophy that still eludes you to this day. Looking at you, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, I mean seriously, why the heck are multiplayer trophies a thing? Kingdom Hearts is no exception to this, as every game in the series has its own set of trophies to be grinded for. Some really easy that almost everyone have, like Wandering in the Dark and 0.2 Birth by Sleep at a whopping 99.9%. Yes, that's the first trophy in the game, so it may be a bad example, but it's really the rare ones that get interesting. In fact, that's the topic of today's video. I was doing some research on the trophies of the Kingdom Hearts series recently and wanted to see exactly how rare some of these trophies can get, and after looking into it all, I ended up finding out a lot more than I anticipated. Like, according to the PlayStation statistics, almost 20% of people started Kingdom Hearts 2 of all games and didn't even finish the rocks this episode. Like, I get it, it's a bit slow, people, but you don't know the absolute peak you're missing out on. But it gets even crazier than that, as today we look at the rarest trophies in every Kingdom Hearts game, and maybe just a few tips in case you're still struggling on that last trophy for the Platinum. Go ahead and comment down below if you have any of the trophies listed here. So let's tackle this thing just like we tackle all these kinds of videos, in release order. And that brings us first to Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix. Also, for full clarity, we're going to be looking at the games on PS4 to keep it all on the same level, as especially for games like Kingdom Hearts 1, the PS3 versions actually do have a few variations. The rarest trophy in Kingdom Hearts 1 is Unchanging Armor, sitting currently at a 2.8% completion rate. This one makes a ton of sense as the requirements mean that you have to beat the game from start to finish without changing any of Sora, Donald, or Goofy's equipment. This means no keyblade changes, no stat increases or damage reduction from armor, and no health or MP increases outside of ones from level ups, of course. There are a few different methods to make this a little easier, though. For one, this has no difficulty requirements, so honestly, just chuck that shit into beginner mode. It's going to make it twice as easy from the get-go. Not to mention your levels aren't restricted either, so take every chance in between worlds to grind some levels along the way. Trust me, with the stat reduction from having no equipment, every bit of increase helps. The length of the trophy is probably one of the biggest turnoffs as well, as you do have to beat the game from start to finish, which can be a bit time-consuming. However, feel free to cut out any side content not needed to make it even quicker. For instance, you can beat the entire game without setting foot in Olympus and Atlantica. You could technically skip Halloween Town or Monstro in place of Atlantica, but I have a pretty good feeling which of those three most of you are going to choose to skip. But speaking of something most of you chose to skip, let's talk about Kingdom Hearts Breach Chain of Memories. I swear this game is so underappreciated, like if you guys just take the time to learn the card system, I promise it's actually super fun. But yeah, Recom isn't exactly popular amongst the community. Even the most common trophy, Ace Striker, which is just hitting an enemy with an object, is only achieved by 65% of people. Likely because you can't even get said trophy until after you find out the game has card mechanics, and yeah, understandably, people probably just dipped after seeing that. With that though, the rarest trophy out of the bunch is Level Master Riku, which requires you to reach level 99 as Riku. Astoundingly, approximately 1.9% of people have achieved this trophy, and honestly, as someone who has the plat for this game, yeah, I can absolutely understand why this is the case. See, with Sora, level 99 is a bit more bearable since you can just spam Mega Flare. It's still a grind as Recom just doesn't have any experience boosting abilities as well as it takes some time in between the encounters. Riku, however, doesn't have anything but straight hands. Well, by hands I mean a literal sword spawned from the darkness in his heart, but you get the point. He just has to find an encounter and make it through the best that he can. The way that you can speed this up is to go to the Castle Oblivion floor which nets the highest amount of experience and use this strong initiative card room which chunks off a huge portion of damage from Heartless in an encounter if you hit the Heartless to start it. This will obviously allow you to take out the enemies much quicker, but another trick is to leave the encounter with just one enemy left. This will allow the enemy that starts the encounter to not despawn and therefore you can immediately hit them again to rinse and repeat for about 8 hours. I wish I was kidding. One other personal tip, make sure to leave the room and come back or even save after a few levels cause any death will reset Riku to when he entered the room and obviously you likely entered the room hours ago resetting on the same enemy. This happened to me going for the plat and I lost like 20 levels, honestly I don't know how I ever found the strength to go back and finish it after that. I can't blame anyone for skipping this trophy so for anyone willing just chuck on some gaming mix and get to grinding. So Kingdom Hearts 2 is a little different than the others as this game's rarest trophy is Top Gun at a pretty understandable 4.1% completion. This trophy requires you get an S rank on every EX mission. And for those of you wondering what the heck all that even meant as you likely don't even know what an EX mission is, it has to do with the gummy ship missions in the game. You know, those arcade scroller type things we all did once to unlock a world and tried to forget ever existed afterward. 
I think it's pretty unanimous that the gummy ship isn't the most favorable parts of the Kingdom Hearts games. I, I don't think they're bad. They're actually even fun in their own right. It's just they're so different from the rest of the game. We all just kind of skipped over them. What's particularly funny about this one, though, is that there's actually a really simple solution. The Donut Ship. All you do is make a custom gummy ship in the editor that has all the ship blocks in a square around the farthest edges that the shop will allow you to set them. Place your weapon gummies you may need in front of those blocks and blim blam chip bow bow you're good to go. This is because the AI and the enemy ships will always aim at the center of your gummy ship and without any center to begin with you can't take any damage. It actually makes these EX missions a joke. I think there may be like one mission where this isn't foolproof. I can't remember which one, if so, and if you do, please do comment below what it is. But for the most part, this will get you through at least 90 to 95% of all the missions. Also, only 5% of you have the Pro Skater Trophy. Our Lord and Savior Tony Hawk would be ashamed of you. Moving on to probably the worst plat trophy in the series, Birth by Sleep's rarest trophy isn't that much of a surprise. The hardest part about this game is the fact that you have to basically 100% the game three times, once per character. That goes hand in hand with this, as the rarest trophy is a three-way tie at 1.9% of people with the Adventurer trophy, that has a separate completion for each character. Wow, that's almost as rare as you subscribing and liking the video while using the link in the description to follow me over on Twitch. Although I will point out when sorting it, PlayStation does have Terra as the rarest, so either there's some more internal percentage being calculated, or even Sony Interface knows how much Terra sucks in this game. Again, this comes as no surprise. For this trophy, you have to complete the reports with each said character. This means you have to do all of the Mirage Arena, every minigame from Ice Cream Beat to Fruit Ball, complete shit bosses like Mysterious Figure, and craft or find every command in the entire game. Somehow, I actually am one to have this Platinum Trophy, so I'm serious when I say as bad as that sounds, it's even worse. I genuinely have no tips for this, the only thing this really requires is a ton of patience and maybe a bit of research for the fast strats like getting medals in the Mirage Arena or something like that. Just in case you're curious, it's the Monstro Vision. Mega Flare the first wave and then spam everything on Monstro. Hate to move from boring to boring, but this next trophy is just about as much of a slugger as the last one. Dream Drop Distance was a Kingdom Hearts game made for the 3DS, however remastered eventually for PS4 unlike Days and Recoded. Therefore, this game was able to receive proper trophy support. This run around is literally the same exact situation however, because at 1.7% of people, the rarest trophy in Dream Drop Distance is the Record Keeper trophy that functions the exact same as the Birth by Sleep's The Adventurer by having you complete all combat, story, items, and game records. So similarly, you need to complete all side content including the secret and special portals, win every flick rush tournament, and unlock every command again, but this time they're tied to the dream eaters which can be a bit tedious to level up. The difference this time around, and likely the reason for the small 0.2% difference, is that you don't necessarily need to do everything twice by completing stuff with Sora and Riku like you did all three for Vin, Terra, and Aqua. Well, not exactly. You see, for things like Flick Rush and the Dream Eater leveling with commands and such, all that is tied together between Sora and Riku, so it doesn't matter who you do it with, unlike how you needed every command three times with Birth by Sleep. However, at the same time, both Sora and Riku have their own unique objectives, like all the portals, as well as getting completion in every world, like with all the treasure chests and such. As someone who isn't exactly ecstatic about Dream Drop, I completely understand this one. However, there are a few tips I'd like to share that I feel make this one a lot easier to truck through. For starters, with Dream Eater leveling, if you use the candy goggles or the water barrel minigame and just quit the minigame upon starting, you'll still get a really good amount of link points and experience. If you have the resources, just buy a crap ton of these and spam this method to level up your Dream Eaters for any commands you need. Also, the easiest way to get all the special portals with each character is to open up the forecast and see if there is a question mark on the Dream Eater on each world. If there is, then that means that there's a portal in that world that you haven't completed and you can search or just use a guide to find set locations. At the same time, if you just need one more portal in the world, just go to the spot in the world that it is and keep dropping from Sora to Riku or vice versa to reset the spawns until you get it. At the end of the day, you'll get the End of Pain Keyblade, which is genuinely one of the coolest weapons in the series, so hey, there's one thing rewarding. Okay, so this next one is a little less crazy with Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, A Fragmentary Passage. This game was of course basically just a tech demo for Kingdom Hearts 3 and even was originally a part of Kingdom Hearts 3 to some degree but they chose to separate it into its own small standalone title. 
And that's just the thing about this game, it really was a small entry as you can complete the game in a matter of a few hours. Because of this, it seems to have definitely reflected the completion rate of the game as even the most common trophy is at 99.9% .9 completion rate with the Wandering in the Dark trophy as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The gameplay is more similar to that of a traditional numbered Kingdom Hearts title so it does explain the consistent completion rate. However, the rarest trophy in the game is still no exception to the rule as it stands at a 2.5% completion rate with the ambitious trophy in completing all the objectives in the game. So yeah, for those that don't know, 0.2 had an objective system in the game where when you completed certain missions, you would unlock cool little customizable items for Aqua. It was clearly a nice little side content it included to add playtime to the game as it was already small and honestly was really fun. I would love to see this return in future titles. Catch me in Kingdom Hearts 4 completing a pizza delivery mission so that I can unlock some cool Mickey ears to wear while I defeat some foretellers. Man, this is the stuff I live for in this series. But yeah, kind of like Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance, there isn't much tips for this as it really, at the end of the day, is just a patience game. Although, one thing I will say is to constantly make save files throughout your playthrough as some objectives are tied to specific boss fights. This way, if you don't defeat a boss in a certain way it's asking you, you can just reload your save and try again. Otherwise, you're intended to carry your objective progress over to a new game and try again. No matter how short the game is, that can still be pretty time consuming. Alright, this next section is going to be split into two parts. As we're going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts 3, which has a set of trophies for the base game, as well as I'll go over the trophies they added in Remind DLC as well. Spoilers, the rarest trophy in the whole series is amongst here. So Kingdom Hearts 3, while still a polarizing game in the series, even today is no slouch in the trophy department. In fact, I would say out of all the games in the series, this is actually the easiest one in the series to collect that platinum trophy. And for those of you saying, oh, what about 0 0.2? That game is super short. That's obviously the easiest. Yeah, for whatever reason, Square must have realized that and couldn't let us just have a freebie because that game literally has no platinum. It has trophies, of course, but they didn't add in a juicy platinum for completing them all. Regardless, KH3 is actually a lot easier compared to the rest of the series, especially if you have the Remind DLC installed because that will allow you to set little cheats on Sora with the easy code to make him broken and fly through the game. For whatever reason, this does not affect trophy collecting. You can still get trophies even with all these cheats on. Like, out of all the rarest trophies, it's still at a pretty high completion rate comparatively with the Synthesis Trophy at 3.7% completion rate that has you completing all the Synthesis objectives in the game by crafting every recipe and completing every photo mission. Obviously, this one does make a lot of sense. No easy code cheat is going to make this any faster for you to grind RNG item drops from enemies to craft a Mega Potion or, or a Calcium Ring that you don't even need at this point in the game. However, ironically, when comparing this to Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, the other games in the series with the Synthesis mechanic, Kingdom Hearts 1 Synthesis Trophy currently has a 5.4% completion rate, and Kingdom Hearts 2 has a 5.1% completion rate. So, out of the synthesis, it sits the lowest of the bunch, but at the same time, Kingdom Hearts 3's rarest trophy does have a completion rate that stands close to the other set two, which I say speaks to the difficulty of the KS3 plat, because the rarest trophy is just a tedious grind, not beating the game without equipment, or finishing missions in a game mechanic most people just ignore. Honestly, I'm just surprised the rarest trophy isn't the freaking Master Chef trophy, I mean, have you seen that dumb egg game? How the f*** are you supposed to get an excellent on that? So, to also touch up on the Remind trophies, I'll just lay it out. Remind has the rarest trophy in the entire series with Risk Taker at 0.2% of people. This one, however, out of all the previously mentioned trophies, I think makes the most sense. For starters, it's no secret Kingdom Hearts 3 was not received well upon release. I for one did enjoy it, but even I can't deny that most of the community feels that it definitely had a mediocre release in some aspects. The game has received numerous updates since then with free content even outside of Remind, so if you haven't already, I do really recommend giving it another go. The updates and the DLC have changed this game into my absolute favorite in the series. But I do think this does have a hand in the Risk Taker Trophy as well as the other Remind DLC trophy completion rates in general. As even the highest completion rate, which is to just beat the story portion of the DLC, is only at 8.2%. I think this is because genuinely people either don't know about the DLC or refuse to give Kingdom Hearts 3 a second chance. I mean, even to this day, I still hear people shocked when they're told about the DLC because it seems after finishing the game, they just went under a rock and forgot anything to do with it. That, or of course, people didn't want to spend the money on a DLC for a game they didn't really receive well to begin with. But once again, if you haven't tried the DLC, I highly recommend it. It's some of the best content in the entire series. Seriously, it's worth every penny. And if you have the PC version, it comes with it installed just in case you weren't aware. 
But to get back on track a little here, I think the main reason this trophy is so unobtained is just that it is genuinely the hardest challenge in the entire series. What it requires you to do is start the game with the Pro Codes option, which gives you a set of 13 nightmarish gameplay restrictions as opposed to the Easy Codes, which were gameplay cheats. These include things like draining your health in magic, cutting off all form changes in grand magic, and even restricting any kind of healing in the game whatsoever. What you then need to do is play through the game and at certain bosses you will receive points based on how many pro codes you currently have turned on. Doing this you will slowly rank up along the way in the pro codes menu and the goal is to attain the highest rank A rank. To get A rank you need a total of 365,000 points and just for clarity the max amount able to be even be obtained is 165,000 in the base game and 365,000 in the DLC portion of the game. This goes into my first tip in all this, that at a total of 530,000 points when you only need 365,000, you don't need every pro code on for every fight. For example, if you're struggling on Lump of Horror and Monstropolis with all codes on, maybe turn one or two off that could help you beat the fight. Do be mindful of this however, as once the fight is complete, you can't retry it for more points. So to my knowledge, if you come up just shy by the end of it, you'll need to start a whole playthrough over again. You may be able to redo the DLC fights as some of those are replayable, but I think once you get the points, they're locked in. I may be wrong about that, and feel free to let me know down in the comments. But also, this requires no difficulty option, so chuck that shit into beginner mode just like with the unchanging armor trophy in Kingdom Hearts 1. You're still going to have a tough time because this is genuinely that hard, but any help is needed, I promise. Lastly, and probably the biggest tip of them all, only certain boss fights even give you the points to begin with. So, as far as it stands for the mob fights, just turn all the pro codes off. They don't benefit you in any way for the trophy, so make your life easier to progress through the world and only turn them on when a boss fight appears. You could also just complete all the data fights and Yazora with all pro codes on to receive the necessary points, but I mean... Who would be insane enough to do that? Guys, I swear I only have two brain cells left and they're fighting for third place. Last but not least, we have Melody of Memory, the final game in the series to receive trophy support as of the making of this video. This game was obviously very different from the rest, however, as it is solely a rhythm game. Surprisingly though, even while being the most different gameplay out of the entire series, this game's rarest trophy is the highest percentage of the entire series with the Enemy Buster trophy to defeat 100,000 enemies at a 5.2% completion rate. I'm honestly shocked at the amount on this one as each song in this game has maybe a couple hundred enemies, obviously varying depending on the song, so this one is a well decent grind fest. Even now going through it myself, after completing just about every song on Proud Difficulty, I'm still not even halfway. Thankfully, you do get to listen to some banger music while you do it, but it's still a grind. What I can say to try and help this one is, for one, try to do as many songs on proud mode, as that will contain more enemies in the song to defeat. As far as some good songs to grind for this, I have two recommendations. The first being Dark Domination, as that song on proud will provide anywhere around 400 enemies per attempt, depending on skill level of course. However, that is legit the hardest song in the game, so if you want one a little easier but still a good amount of enemies, then I would recommend Wave of Darkness. Still a little difficult, but has a total of 389 enemies on proud mode, so by the time you're done with this trophy, you're going to be a pro at the song anyway. Regardless, this is probably the trophy in the series that I think is the easiest to just get lost in. I mean, if you're into rhythm games, you're probably just going to get this naturally by playing songs over and over. It's really easy and really fun. I don't really see any issues in getting this one. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. That's all the rarest trophies in the series. It was actually really fun to research for this video as I learned a bunch of small little fun facts along the way, and hopefully you guys did too. If any of these helped you get that one trophy you've been stuck on, let me know in the comments. I would genuinely love to know that I helped someone in this video. While you guys are there, don't forget to like and subscribe as that really does help the growth of the channel, as well as use the links in the description to find me on all of the social medias like Twitter and Twitch that all have similar content that I post on this channel. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in Quadratum, fellow masters. Get jiggy and stay awesome.